Hi there, Giovanni here at Fraptus, and today's idea is inspired by the famous effect of the techno rumble. The rumble is, as the name suggests, a sort of rumbling low tone that we have that we use to fill the space between one kick and the other. Now, to perform an actual techno rumble, we'd need a, a specific outboard, uh, perhaps even a door, where we can carefully shape and sculpt our reverb to give it the space it deserves between one kick and the other. Still, we can um, get some inspiration from that technique and see what we can do with our gear. And as always, it is a chance to get to know our gear better. So to start, I choose a uh, kind of a techno-ish sequence with straight 16th notes uh, with 135 BPM and it sounds like this. The patch is pretty straightforward. I have my CV from the Usta controlling the Brainso, Brainso's final output to the CGM. I can saturate it a little bit now that I think about it. And uh, I have my wave, uh, my envelope uh, which is not controlling the amplitude, but instead it's controlling the uh, wave shaper, the, the wave folder, sorry. And in the first segment, it acts as a sort of VCA. Now, of course, if I want, I can crank it up a little bit and have a more acid tone, but I, I want to keep it this way right now. And you will see why in a minute, because I have my, on my track one, the kick drum, that I realized with a classic technique uh, by patching a single note, single stage sequence, which is outputting just one gate. And uh, it is triggering this envelope here, which in turn is controlling both the frequency and the amplitude of my green sine wave, which is then fed to the CGM and then properly saturated. And together, they sound like this. I keep the bass quite low because I can bring it up like this or like this. But most importantly, I want to take advantage of uh, Brainsos Ping Circuit to use a parallel gate pattern on my track one, which is gate A. Now I'm gonna use it to give some rhythmic accent, like this. It gives me a more percussive vibe without having to use a dedicated drum kit. Now of course I'd need uh, some cymbals, uh, some hi-hats, something to fill the air, but Let's stick with this system here. Now, the most important thing is my reverb over here, which I am now using to process the bass line. This is quite an unorthodox technique, and that is the basis of the techno rumble. This is what it's gonna sound like per se. I find it disgusting. This is uh, completely pointless, and uh, now we're gonna bring in Fumana. So we're gonna do quite an unexpected move and we're gonna patch our reverb return. Instead of using the dedicated group return, we're gonna patch it to our Fumana. The odd and even bands can process now the left and the right reverb returns. And then we will use the odd and the even outputs and patch them to our CGM like this remember to set the green reverb in pre-fader mode so that even if we turn this all the way down we can still appreciate the reverb play with the faders it is already sounding better 
but now what we need is a side chain to duck the reverb. Now there's plenty of techniques for the side chain, I might link to them in the description or even here, but to save some space, to spare some module and to save some patch cables, I want to do this. I'm gonna patch my integrated output which is already processing the yellow envelope that's why I use this for the kick and this for the bass and uh, it is already adding a slower release is integrating the falling stage and I want to patch it to this input here which is controlling the amplitude of my peak slash notch By setting the attenuverter as an inverter, I am already inverting right away the, uh, em the envelope that is controlling the kick. So I'm using, I can use this as a sort of release effect. See how it changes. And I'm I can use and I must set the parametric scanner option the center and the width so that I can appreciate a significant uh, amplitude change with every kick impulse because if I keep this or this all the way counterclockwise the parametric scanner would be like here and too thin so this is completely deactivated. I like to keep it all the way open and I must keep my fader up because now I am using this as a sort of automated notch filter. See? Nothing happens if I keep them all the way down. And uh, I can, if I want, I can keep these which are almost out of the range of the parametric scanner up to add some filler like this and this is what it sounds like with the riff now the peculiarity of this technique is that uh, we don't um, side chain just the amplitude but we also side chain um, the um, harmonic content of our techno rumble because the envelope um, opens and closes different frequencies this making the result much more interesting at this point it is also nice to play with the wave folder and the wave shaper section and um, feed the reverb with more higher frequency and higher harmonics. This way it will reverberate and will resonate towards the higher spectrum. We can play with the higher bands and have a more um, and have more movement in the rumble. think about using uh, the another a copy of my green envelope which is playing a straight 16 note pattern to add to control one of these envelopes here now I can bring more hi-hats high range here and I can have this sort of hi-hat effect like this or, or even this or I can even think about using a longer cable and patching it here all while using just Fumana and now I can even have a sort of hi-hat which is moving so I have the low end which is providing the rumble and the high end provide I can bring some more low end here and 
and the high end which is providing the cymbals. you found this idea useful and inspiring and I will see you next time for more patch tips.